Hello and welcome to this video on Yoro Rack Utilities and how they're the glue that binds a system together. Where well, you can apply these patches to lots of things, I'll be demoing the new MMX2 from Atto V Project. So let's check out what's to come. This video is sponsored by Atto V Project. Now Yoro Rack Utilities really are the thing that ignites a modular system and elevates it into something highly customizable and powerful. Things like mixing, attenuating, inverting and offsetting signals allows you to make the most of your other modules, be those modulation sources or audio. I know Atto V Project had been brainstorming ideas around CV utilities and that's led to this rather simple 4HP mixer. And set of utilities. But before we get to the twist, which is that there's two of them, let's just go through the features of each module. We have four inputs here and four level controls and a single output. The first two channels have normal attenuated level controls and channels three and four have attenuverters, meaning from the right of center we get positive level control and inverted negative level control to the left. Channel 4 has a normalized voltage of 10 volts, so you can offset a signal from minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts. And at this output stage, the mix is amplified by a factor of 1.8, allowing you to actually amplify signals with this as well. Though the twist here is that these mixers are matrixable, and funnily enough, MM stands for matrixable mixer. These are sold as pairs, so you get two, and around the back of the modules, there's jumpers, which allow to use jumper cables to connect the PCBs together, and that allows you to chain the inputs to create a matrix mixer system. And while they're sold as a pair, so you get two, I'd certainly like another two at least to create a four output matrix mixer. And by connecting the modules together to create the matrix mixer, the first three inputs are the ones that get normaled across to the next one, allowing you to create two different blends of the same signals to patch out to two different outputs, two different destinations in a system. And by patching into channel 4 here, you'll override the 10 volts that's normalized to channel 4. And on the first three inputs, you can patch a signal in and break these normaled connections. So this video has patches to showcase utilities in Yoro Rack in general. Certainly try them out with what you have. But it's also here to show the MMX2 specifically. Patches are on screen. Skip around as you like. And let's dive in. We all know the phrase, you can't have enough VCAs, but really, you can't have enough mixers, and here's two situations, I'm using these two separately, where I always want mixing in my system and in my patching. Now the first mixer here is set up to mix my oscillator waves. I have a saw wave on the first channel here, another saw wave from the other oscillator on the DHO, unison sound with the two saw wave oscillators there and then a more aggressive folded tone and all of this comes up into a filter I'm then mixing modulation here with an envelope the second channel that's also the green trace green cables second channel blue trace blue cables is a basic triangle LFO So already just with two channels, I can blend some envelope amount and some LF off this push and pull on top of the rhythmic envelope. Have some steps random here on channel three. And mixing that. The yellow trace, by the way, is the output of the mixer. An envelope and stepped random is one of my favorite modulation combos. We can bring the LFO in as well to make it sway but also make it dance around and step and rhythmic envelope. And then the fourth channel is audio, it's an extra harmonic output here from the oscillator to audio rate modulate the filter. Just really makes this dynamic, exciting, heavily modulated but from simple sources. A nice kind of bass patch. In 
In this patch, I'm mixing gate signals to make melodic patterns. Now the signals coming in here on the first three channels and the first three lines here on the scope are simple gate signals. They've been mixed together and the yellow trace and yellow cables is the output of this mix of gates. They're all just clock divided from each other from a clock source and that's been quantized to create my melody. Let's first start by turning these down and as I blend in, different divisions there and as we mix these together, we start to create different patterns and then a longer gate. So as we mix these together, and that's a pattern that I like. I could go in and change the probabilities of these gates firing, which would start to adjust the pattern as well. And of course the rate of these gates coming in would make a difference too. If I take these back up to 100% for both of these gate inputs and let's play with the division these are now moving slower than they were before and that's changed the melody as well so simple gate signals into the mixer their levels will create the intervals the amount of signal in this blended stepped pattern that it creates Adjusting probability changes how these stack on top of each other and changing the rates of the gates coming in creates patterns too. So here I'm using two matrixable mixers, one for the actual mix of things that we can hear. So this is what we're actually listening to. This one is feeding my reverb, that's all coming back together in the main mix for this patch. I have drums on the first channel this clicky car plus strong on free and this plucked filter pattern they all mix across or have a mult across and I can choose which one of them is feeding my send so maybe we base it around this pluck and beat if I want to fully drench out the melody and reverb, occasionally throw in the drums. It's a really simple idea, but it saves splitting the cables across multiple mixers as these already do that for you. One side for your main volumes and one side for your effect sends. So here I'm using the MMX2 to set up a sidechain signal. Without the sidechain signal, here's my dry sound. and my effects on top. And while I want lots of effects, this is just quite messy and murky. So I'm using the offset voltage simply to open the VCA in the first place. The input to this external VCA is the effect. And then I'm using this envelope that plays any time a dry note plays. I'm inverting it, so turning the channel free attenuator all the way left, and then bringing the offset to come up to the VCA being open, and a shorter decay time works well to mask this effect but still benefit from the dry sound coming through cleanly, compared to the kind of mess of not doing this the effects all over the top of the new notes playing. Now the effects duck out of the way when a new note plays. And with a longer decay time, you can have a more obvious pumping, sucking, ducking effect. So one nice thing about having utility style mixers that have inversion is that you can take filters, say a nice low pass filter that's just the low pass filter, and create high pass responses and notch responses 
by blending copies and versions of the input to the filter, which in this instance is a square wave or pulse wave with PWM. That's a split of it on this blue cable here. This copy is going off to the filter's input. This one is coming into the mixer. And by blending and inverting copies of the filter's input against the filter's output, we change its type. So the purple cable here in channel 4 is a low pass filter. I'm using this module and the offset it generates just to open the filter's cutoff. Had I moved the filter module here, I'd just turn this manually. I wanted you to see me do it is all. So great sounding saturated low pass. And this particular filter is just a low pass. There's no other filter responses on it. And this is the equivalent of me turning that filter's cutoff. Now, if I blend the dry input to the filter, again, this PWM with the filter's output. So I'm mixing filter in and filter out here. There's this really lovely notch response. The one nice thing that happens is if I invert one of these, and let's invert the filter output here, as that's in the inverting channel 4 there. We actually now get a high pass response. This is the normal filter input against an inverted filter output. So here we have a modulation matrix setup. Now the first three, the two LFOs and envelope, come into one, two, three, and these normalize across to the second module. The fourth input doesn't normalize. So the noise is here on this yellow cable, and I have a stepped random signal here on this black cable. I can create different blends of this modulation, and because I have two of these, route them to two different destinations. This one feeds a filter, if I turn this noise up, that's modulating the filter cutoff of the noise. And I have a wavefold level and oscillator level modulated by this one. If I turn up this sample and hold, you can hear what that's doing. So, with different blends of these signals, let me play a few notes. So removing the modulation from this and opening the filter in the patch, let's look at everything here that modulates the folder. We start with this green trace LFO. We have the ring modulated combination of LFOs. On three here, we have an envelope. I'll just play a note on my keyboard. And then on 4 we have this stepped random signal that isn't normalised, this is just patched into just this module. So let's create a blend of these modulation sources, this one routing to filter, this one to folder. And we have a complex web of modulation from very basic sources in a matrix here. got this far in the video drop a hard sync in the comments and what are some of your favorite utility modules i'd love to hear what you're using head to patreon.com forward slash divkid to support the work that i do and to join the community hit like and subscribe it all helps out the channel and thanks for watching bye